Just one big story, isn't it? Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Story Connection. I'm your host, Donna Wilberg. Now, everyone has a story, right? Well, my guest tonight is going to be talking about a dying profession, art restoration. His name is George Capron. He's one of very, very few that are still doing this tedious work, and we're so pleased to have him on the show. Welcome, George. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's not exactly dying, but it's uh, not. Uh, it's hard to keep it going. Um, there's a lot of artists, but mm -hmm. they just want to make fresh art and, and uh, produce it, and that's it. The restoration part of it has to be include art history and then the technical side of it, which a lot of people don't want to bother with. Yeah, I imagine, like you had mentioned, some of the old masters that, that you're restoring, they don't use the same kind of materials. So you're constantly having to test and, and do all that. You want to talk a little bit about, about of, that process? A lot of testing, especially in the old paintings. Uh, a lot of times you can test under the uh, side edge where the frame has sheltered it. Sometimes you can see what's, what the painting is supposed to really look like, mm -hmm. and sometimes not. But um, sometimes the painting is so cracked and, um, and dirty, darkened by the darkened varnish and all, that uh, it's hard to, um, hard to see, so you have to do tests on it. You even have to test on separate colors, because sometimes greens and reds especially are what we call fugitive, mm -hmm. and the, the very lightest, uh, uh, most... Um, oh, <laughs> The easiest solvent will still take color, and mm -hmm. we don't want that. We have to tone it down, keep uh, mellowing it down so that uh, it doesn't uh, take color. So and what do you do if the materials aren't available anymore? You have to kind of fudge it, make your own? There's a, a lot of material, a lot of uh, written material on uh, uh, the uh, chemistry side of it, going back oh. to uh, Cennini. He wrote a book in 14th century about the materials they used, for example. Uh -huh. So if you read that and memorize that, then you're okay. Uh, and I have something I want to show you. This is the my old book, The Cleaning of Paintings, and this is the new book. Well, they're, oh both the, they're both roughly the same, but, uh -huh. but this, this one's uh, about uh, 80 years more modern technologically than, than this one. So if they but this is the one I started with. Oh wow! So <laughs> they have they revamped the processes so that they they've updated the materials that that do the same thing as some of the old ones do. The, yes. Okay. But um, fundamentally, that it's that basic fundamental concept that has mm -hmm. to be grasped by anybody starting, and that is uh, first we do no harm. It sounds like the uh, doctor's oath, which it just about is. Mm -hmm. And then we remove the object from the dangerous situation, and then we re try to stabilize it, and then we try to reverse that uh, danger so that the painting is not undergoing any stresses. And then, then you can start the restoration. And the restoration may be uh, some in painting, but it usually starts with cleaning. And in cleaning, then you can see the painting. You mm -hmm. can see it again thoroughly and understand it, examine it. And then when you start your restoration, you can be more uh, positive about what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know I watch Antiques Roadshow, and when they bring on these huge paintings, and they say, well, yeah. you know, if you got that cleaned or you got that, that uh, uh, restored, yeah. it would increase the value tenfold or whatever. Yeah, right. And then you think, well, where do you take that? What do you, how, how do you get yeah. that done? Who does that? That's it's you. very, there's um, uh, a four or five now in uh, Sacramento, two new ones and, and two old ones, and the other one I'm not sure about, about her. Mm -hmm. 
time in, in, in the business, but uh, uh, still it's pretty hard to find. If you call the Crocker Art Museum, I'm on their list, and they'll send out a list of uh, restorers that, mm -hmm. they know, that they're aware of in the area. And there's only, I think there's only two of us on that list now. Yeah, wow. Um, there's only one or two in, in Nevada, the whole state. There's uh, about uh, 3,600 in the whole of, of our membership, the AIC, the American Institute for Conservation, mm -hmm. in, in the uh, world. And this is a, a, wow. a national, international organization. Well, when you think of all the artwork that's out there and how many and how old yeah. art art is, you know that's that's not a very uh, a, big uh, pool of resources. Or there's a lot more uh, restoration goes on in in uh, Italy and in France and mm -hmm. Germany. Yeah. Uh, because that's uh, sort of the um, the the foundation of the Renaissance. Anyway, mm -hmm. most of the Renaissance paintings are what we call art today. You know, yeah. Famous old art. Yeah. And. Um, but there's a lot more going on. For example, a, a pair of, well, not a pair, but a, um, an icon from the state of Georgia mm -hmm. in the former Soviet Union that I worked on. And I collaborated with a uh, uh, re art restorer in Turkey, uh -huh. in Istanbul. Um, that's the kind of connections that we have all over the world. And those members that we have mm -hmm. in the book, we can call them up and look oh, up their specialty and where they are and call yeah. them and say, help. <laughs> That's great. So. Well, you brought some of the materials with you um, that you use when you do mm -hmm. your restorations. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, the one th let's take the a look. major material that I brought along was because it shows up so well on uh, on the uh, when when you're showing things, people are always impressed with it. Is the uh, gold leaf mm -hmm. when I'm uh, replacing the gilding on a painting on the frame? I mean, not on the painting. Sometimes on the painting, though, mm -hmm. because they did use it. Um, I have to rebuild the frame first and all of the decorations on it, and then if there has to be regilded, then then I show the uh, then I use the uh, gold leaf. And this is how it looks on the on the pad that I'm, and I want to show it by holding up the gold itself. Oh, it's like it's, it's like very very delicate. Wow. And will literally float in the air, and that's how you move it when when we're handling it. Is the uh, is we puff on it. To give it a little puff to move it, mm -hmm. like that. Wow, that's amazing! And but then anyway, that just you sort of rub that on there. That's twenty-four karat gold. You put on a uh, when you get the surface prepared. Mm -hmm. You put on a um, size. It's, it's called a size. You put on the clay clay bowl first. Then the size is the sticky stuff. Mm -hmm. It has to dry and get tacky, and then you put the gold on that. Then it has to dry and harden, and then you can burnish it and color it to match. On one of the large uh, paintings in the, that, that you have a picture of now with uh, mm -hmm. uh, Peter standing beside it, we had to redo, regild the whole frame because it was just in such bad shape. Well, let's take a look at, uh, at the pictures that you brought with because they're, uh, we're talking yeah. time. They have yeah. to be, they have to be so tedious to do. Some of them, uh, it does take a, a lot of time to do in, um, in the uh, large uh, Hudson River mm -hmm. one with the gold frame, for example, that one uh, we had to had to dismantle the. Um, so that's the one we're talking one about. Which one are we now. seeing here? That's this the one I'm talking about right with now. The, oh my gosh! And the two upper corners, inside corners, were so warped that I had to pull those out, dismantle the, that part of the frame, and take those out, and then reshape them uh, by steaming them and then uh, remounting them back in so they were not pressing into the canvas. And so the canvas is relieved and the whole painting is happier now. Nice. If you could have seen a picture before that, uh, it would be amazing. This is a before picture on a very large seven by nine foot painting I'm working on. Uh, my uh, intern in the foreground and I'm in the background and that's the first initial just dusting out in the driveway. We didn't, I didn't want to take it inside. Mm. Uh, what, what is the painting it's a of? Painting of uh, it's a life-size painting of a cow, and there it is on the oh table. Oh, and, and the table is uh, 8 by 12 feet, so you can see how big the painting is. It fills that whole half of, the, half of my garage studio. So what are you doing to the painting? You're cleaning the painting, it? Uh, the white you see around it is the new lining, the mm -hmm. new canvas lining on the back. And then uh, 
The, before that, it had the facing on it, <laughs> which is paper facing on the front to keep any paint from jumping off. Mm -hmm. And then, on, then we put the, turn it over and put the new canvas on the back. Then we turn it back over again and pull the facing off and start cleaning the wax off. Then I can begin to get a look at the painting. Wow. I mean, at the real painting. You saw how dirty it yeah. was. Yeah. Is there any project that's too large for you? Do you just say, no, my, that would take me years? I have turned down a couple of paintings, yeah, yeah. because they were uh, out of my capability. Uh, one of them had to do with the size of the vacuum table. Uh, it took a, would take a, an eight-foot vacuum table to do it, and I only have a four-by-four. Four. Wow. This one is a small painting. It shows on the right side. You can see uh, the, um, how it's clean and the angle of the line coming down at an angle there, showing the separation between the clean and the... Uh, and uh, after the first cleaning, anyway, on the right side. What a difference. And then um, the whole painting will be as light as that later, and it really does make him look brilliant. This is a painting that was done in about 1920. Oh, my goodness, 1920. Yeah. yeah. The uh, cow painting, the big one, the, mm -hmm. was done in 1905, 1902. Wow. Yeah, by uh, Henry, uh, Gustav Henry Mosler. Him, his father, and grandfather were all painters named Gustav Henry Mosler. So the <laughs> yeah, we had fun doing research on that one because mm. you had to find out exactly which one did it. And the grandson did this one. Wow. Yeah. So what is the most, um, I don't want to say prestigious because art is, art, art is all prestigious, mm -hmm. but what is the one that you just were kind of wowed with? with well, it's one I didn't do. Okay. Well, that's a Picasso in San Francisco and the, the uh, the man wanted me to um, remove a spot of mold that mm -hmm. was growing on it. Very, very popular with Picasso paintings because he was, uh, like a lot of artists, or some artists I should say, was not too fussy about what he put in the painting. Mm -hmm. um, and I told him that it would require me going there, bringing my equipment and, and doing the job there because I didn't want to bring it out here because of insurance problems. Mm -hmm. Picasso's started, you know, I'm not going to say a number, but big numbers. Anyway, that's one I didn't do. Uh, the other one, as I said, was the uh, the one where I didn't want to do the lining on it with the um, doing it in parts. I've got a, a four by four vacuum table, and it would take a full eight, and it all had to be done at once. Hmm. And I've turned that down. As far as the tiny detailed thing, uh, I did work on a Cezanne. Uh, attributed to D Cezanne, I'm not saying it was a Cezanne, but in the upper right corner was some paint was beginning to peel on a little white house that he had painted. Mm -hmm. It was just this tiny. And it was up in, and uh, the paint was beginning to peel off of it. And I reattached the paint and retouched some of the missing paint in there and, and cleaned the rest of it. And that's, that's all I did to it. Wow. So yeah. what, do you, what do you do with tears? And, and tears usually, if it's a small tear, inch or two, or what we, you know, an L shape tear like that, and if it's just small, then we have been known to just put a patch back there on mm -hmm. the back side of mm -hmm. good matching linen uh, or a fabric of the same thread count and so on so it doesn't create stresses in that. If you, if you put an odd material behind it, uh, you've got a um, sailcloth that it's painted on and mm. you put a lightweight or an overly heavyweight canvas behind it, it'll, as it ages, it'll change, the stresses change, pretty soon you'll be able to see the pattern of the patch on the front. You want to try to avoid that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. So a lot of things to think about. I imagine. Well, you sent me a list of what the, what, what you go through for just, for each prog, uh, project. Mm -hmm. There's an initial meeting with the stakeholder, the client, uh, physical examination, the evaluation, proposed treatments, client approval, insurance, estimate, logistics of transport, plan for receiving <laughs> upon arrival, plan to treat, receive at studio, unpack, overview, examination, preliminary visual manual, intensive solvent <laughs> testing, mechanical structures, change orders, treatment documentation, change orders, uh, you know, it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. uh, document to x-rays? You mm -hmm. even do x-rays and no, stuff? No, I don't do them, but I, but I would, if it was called for, if I thought it was indicated, I would, mm -hmm. I would recommend it. And sometimes there's one that I'm doing a lot of research on right now. It's a uh, 15th century uh, portrait. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the uh, problem with it is I can't see it all yet. It's one of those where you just get to look at the front of it. You, can, you can't see anything on the back. Mm. And the back of a painting tells a lot about the painting and its status, where it came from, and who painted it even sometimes. A lot of uh, Van Gogh's paintings were tracked because of the canvas. Him and um, uh, good old what's-his-name <laughs> were painting together, and they bought this huge roll of canvas. Mm -hmm. So all of their paintings came up, Gauguin, Paul Gauguin. Okay. And the, all these paintings came off the same roll of canvas, and they were able to track it and, and um, uh, attribute paintings to him because of that. Well, and the one I'm talking about and I'm researching now, uh, there I don't have that ability to read the canvas that well mm -hmm. or to see the back of it. That will yeah. tell a lot. Yeah. Uh, I know it's been treated before. They say we have what we call interventions, and they, uh, the intervention means that they've come in and it's been cleaned, it's been patched, it's been and so on. Anyway, back to the patch again. If it's mm -hmm. patch is little, that's a... I mean, if the tear is little as a patch, is fine. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, big or, or uh, as in some, well, on my on my uh, business card, the top picture show in the shambles that the painting is in shredded, oh my gosh. and the bottom picture is the painting all back together again, and wow. that that means that uh, it has to be lined, a brand new canvas lining the whole back of it. Wow, and that's then, a lot of work. Yeah. How long does it take you to do something like that? Well, this one, uh, probably uh, six or eight months, I guess. Six or eight that. months, no. wow. Four, That's a four long or five time. months, I'm getting five months, um, five <laughs> four months. months. But it takes takes time. You're it's checking with the boss out there in the audience. Well, I said five <laughs> or six, and she said four, so. <laughs> oh, wow. So your to-do list, linings, patches, stitching, putty, infestations, mold, fungus, fire, smoke. And I imagine smoke is a big one, right? Smoke is a big one, yeah. Uh, tobacco? Um, tobacco smoke, house smoke. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. Before the turn of the last century, that's mm -hmm. before 1900, every house had a fireplace. They had candles and mm -hmm. coal oil lamps and all kinds of gas lighting yeah. and so on. And that created the soot and the, and the black uh, smoke that, uh, that affected paintings. Some of them come out so dark you can hardly see the imagery. And then afterwards, it just spectacular because the, wow. the oil paint itself is not affected by it, mm -hmm. but the um, uh, surface is. Mm -hmm. And the, the smoke also affects the varnish that's on it. And, yeah. and, the, and the varnish darkens because of age anyway, especially mm -hmm. the Damar and the Copal. Yeah. And uh, so you've got to try to um, do the testing on it, see what works, and then when you when you clean it, then you can see those colors come back beautifully. Oh, I bet yeah. you that's that's such that's a joy. That's gratifying, very gratifying. Yeah. yeah, you have to find that gratifying oh, because yeah. that's, you know, it's spending all that time and it's it's, it's such such I tedious have work. Some clients who they laugh, they cry, they do all kinds of things, or even give us a lot of wine. So <laughs> <laughs> that's always nice. Yeah. Wow, corrosion, abrasion, storage conditions, and I imagine yeah. uh, water damage. Water damage, the, the big uh, cow painting I'm working on now was left outside uh, and apparently under the eaves where water splashed back up on it. Oh, so yeah. the whole bottom edge of it is rotted out. And But I've got to try to um, recreate, this is a restoration part, yeah. to recreate what that bottom looked like. and it's. It's a continuation of the painting, in mm -hmm. other words. But I can't continue it too much because I'm getting into the what we call the hand of the of the master, mm -hmm. and I'm not the master. I'm just stopping it there and making it so you can see it, and to keep it from deteriorating further. Okay, so that's another question I have yeah. for you. If there's a splotch or there's something that needs to be uh, recreated on a master painting. Do you do that? Are yes, you okay. I will do that. You're the doctor. I do that as a, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> as a, um, uh, if it's a field of color and there's a splotch in it, as mm -hmm. you said, and something's wrong with that or the paint has fallen off or something and it has to be replaced. Uh, if it's got, one of them recently had a, a, a part of the frame was across the top and it was welded to the paint. I don't know why, but it like it was glued or mm -hmm. it was put on there while the paint was still wet. Oh, and boy. then after 50, 80 years, it was fused to the wood. I tried to take it off and I couldn't. So finally, when I did take it, the paint came with it. Mm. I can't take it, scrape the paint off that piece of wood and put it back. Yeah. So I had to fill that conservator's putty, fill it and, 
and then refinish the surface, build it up, put on uh, what they call an intarsia, which is to re recreate the texture of the canvas around it mm -hmm. in, the, in the putty. And then it dries and hardens, you put on a gesso, and then you put on the color. And that way, it goes away. Wow. Uh, well, it doesn't go away. But my colors are not lighter than the surrounding area. They have to be one grade less light okay. toward the darker side. Mm -hmm. And the point is that the color will recede to your eye when somebody's looking at it. It just kind of uh, intuitively you know it's receding and it, it doesn't bother it then. If it was the reverse and it was one step lighter than the surrounding area, it would pop out and you would see it too that's quickly, too clearly. So that's why we do that. It's, there's lots of lots of technology on that. The lighting you use, mm -hmm. daylight. I try to try to do retouching in in good uh, daylight, reflected sunlight, yeah. natural light, because I'm presuming that's the light that would the artist painted in. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, we're almost out of time. Yeah. So do you want to give your information so people know how to reach you? Uh, if you uh, want to call me, I have to look at my card to be sure. I'm at 530-389-2321. And my um, email is artrestoredfar at yahoo.com. That's A-R-T-R-E-S-T-O-R-E-D and then capital letters F A R at yahoo.com. Super. F-A-R is Fine Arts Restored. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's give um, a little information about the Story Connection, shall we? The Story Connection airs the second and fourth Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our companion show, Paranormal Connection, airs the first and third Thursdays of each month. Each episode repeats the following Friday at 1.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Watch these programs online at the same airtimes by going to accesssacramento.org and clicking Watch 17. In the Sacramento region, you can see us on Comcast Channel 17 and on AT&T Channel 99. You can find previously aired shows on the Story Connection YouTube channel. For information on upcoming shows and previous Story Connection guests, go to storyconnectiontv.blogspot.com. You can contact us at storyconnectiontv at gmail.com. And don't forget, find us on Facebook. Become a friend and become a fan. Well, in the few minutes we have left, one of the questions that I didn't get to was, have you always been into art restoration? Oh, no. What, were you, what did you do before? What did I do before? Um, I had... Uh, Before I joined the Navy, uh -huh. I was always called, I was called on to do the artistic work, make a drawing of this, make mm -hmm. a painting of that, do the lettering here and so on. The same thing happened in the Navy, uh, even though I ended up in technical, te technological stuff, a lot of radar and electronics and mm -hmm. aviation and so on. Um, as a, a veteran of both the Korean and Vietnam War and a lot of cruising around the world, I did get to see the world and a mm -hmm. lot of museums and all. I'm the guy who went to the museums, not to the bars. <laughs> and, <laughs> it uh, paid off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, when I got out, I decided I was going to go straight into art 100%. Mm -hmm. I got my master's degree from UC Berkeley. And, and in uh, 1979, I call it the jumping off place where I started studying and, and reading up and learning about um, art restoration. Yeah. Well, I heard you're, you're also a musician, or you love to sing. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I like to sing. I, love, you like, I to like singing with my daughters, and you know, they, we enjoy that, yeah. Well, your daughter, who is, is just a, a love, I love her voice, her, her, her uh, singing voice is just amazing. Yeah. She told me a story of, of when she was little, how you used to dress her and her sister up in little striped jackets and straw hats and put little mustaches on them, and they were a yeah. barbershop. Quartet. We were the, the singers, yeah. The we singers. would take that show on the road. We didn't really do that, but that was that was fun. Yeah. Wow. We did that. Well, you certainly uh, <laughs> you certainly inspired her to to go yeah, on and just did. be a beautiful singer. Yeah, she's still doing that too. Yeah. She still still sings with uh, any any. I guess she finds select groups with mm -hmm. the right kind of chemistry for her. Yeah. Uh, I have a a, a, vid or a a recording of her with Blue Cheer. 
Oh, yeah. Which yeah. was a group that I grew up with. Oh, wow. So, yeah. except they're a lot older now. But anyway, it was a lot of fun hearing that story. And, and when she yeah. told me about you, I thought, I would love, 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 <laughs> love, love to to uh, hear your story. So I'm so pleased that you came on and shared it with us. And just in the couple minutes we have left, what kind of tips do you have for people who do have artwork that don't know how to take care of it? Is there any, just uh, a couple things? One very important one that I tell people, and that is hang your least important painting, the one you don't like the most, hang that over your fireplace. Not your best one, not your favorite one. Mm. That's a bad place for a painting. Okay. Also, hang them in, in uh, rooms and not in hallways because hallways have moving air and the canvas is going in and out, in and out. And if you live there for five years, it's got five years of people walking by it causing it to move. If you live there 100 years, you get 100 years and so on. Wow. Does the same apply to watercolors? Or that well, water artwork behind glass? Watercolors usually are sealed behind glass and then usually with a dust cover on the back. So they're, they're a lot better. But still, sunlight, raw daylight will uh, uh, deteriorate the colors in the watercolor. In it. And if the paper browns, that's okay. You can, mm -hmm. ha you can whiten that. But oh. you can't do anything about the color in the, okay. if the color is uh, degraded. Okay, so, so you can't intensify it once it's, once it's gone? No, it's gone. I have a print by, uh, oh, anyway, a New York artist, mm -hmm. uh, Lichtenstein. Mm -hmm. And um, it has been exposed to daylight, I, I, I guess. But mm -hmm. anyway, the, the print itself, the physical ink part, has deteriorated. And yeah. I don't know exactly what happened. I took it to an appraiser in San Francisco, and he said, <laughs> Aw. Too bad. Oh, gee. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, you know, yeah. time's run out. I we have, too. <laughs> we have, I know, we have to go now, but I wanted to thank my uh, wonderful crew for coming out and volunteering their time tonight. And, um, you know, like George, I'm always out there asking, you know, what's your story? So uh, if I come up to you and ask you what your story is, I hope you're ready for me, because mm -hmm. we, we love uh, doing this show and yeah. having people come on and talk Great. about these things. So. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, I appreciate it was, it. It was, Thank I you. wish we had more time because I have a billion questions for well, you. I have a billion and a half answers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show.